If you write for whatever the best reason you have is, and you see a functioning typewriter for sale somewhere, and if you also happen to have enough expendable income, you should purchase it. They're outdated and ostentatious, but they're also pleasurable and capable in terms of maximizing your productivity and just maybe balancing your cognitive energies. I, like a lot of people, believe myself to be in a daily battle with most digital and web-based technology. I'm always striving to balance my time between the use of the former and activities which I generally more so value and come away from happier to have done. Activities such as writing and reading which require sustained concentration, deep contemplation, focused attention, and critical thinking. Because of their more demanding nature, however, those more valuable activities often feel very strenuous in comparison to activities involving the computer. They exercise completely different cognitive faculties in very different ways. What the typewriter does for the writer, in my opinion, is provide a happy midpoint between the convenient and speedy computer keyboard, which happens to give you immediate interactive access to and engagement with that goddess of distraction, the activator of base idleness, the internet and the entirely analog nature and classic combination of pen and paper. This midpoint, by virtue of its single purpose and the pleasure of its aesthetic, affords the kind of state of mind and productivity that, for many, is very hard to achieve with modern computers. Of course, it's a fairly impractical piece of technology. If you get one, you'll have to adapt to more than a few new ways, or indeed old ways of working. You'll probably get your fingers trapped quite a few times. Aside from such matters, doesn't she look fine? The typewriter is a sensuous pleasure. Thanks to its more primitive and classically mechanical nature, it utilizes your senses in ways that the computer and the word processor simply can't. When you work on a first draft with a typewriter, you're instantly producing physical and thus more tangible proof of your effort, the printed result of your work, and that the hardest stage of that work can literally be to hand. And though what is produced in that way may not be something to be proud of, where elegance of style, balance of argument, and coherence are concerned, for example, it can be a source of motivation and comfort. To have a first draft available to you in this fashion is to properly comprehend the significance of your enterprise and ambition. I'm reminded of a line from one of my six out of five outstanding books, Stoner. He had held it in his hands and caressed its plain paper and turned its pages. It seemed delicate and alive like a child. He never thought of it, and his authorship, without a sense of wonder and disbelief at his own temerity and at the responsibility he had assumed. Depending on the nature of your writing objective, even the final draft may not need to exist in printed form, but after having done the first draft with a typewriter, you'll always have the genesis of your work in that inherently romantic state. In this respect, the relationship of touch and sight with the craft is far more intense than it would be with a digital writing medium. There's little sense of illusion to writing with a typewriter. The letters that you summon to form words and terms and sentences and propositions aren't merely represented and digitally rendered, they're resultant of more tangible force and pressure, appearing confidently instead. And because the keys need more decided pressing, you're given a feeling of more involved and somewhat dirtier work. The typewriter feels like, and in many respects is more akin to, an engine, one that you're a crucial extension of. A computer is obviously a machine too, but depending on what you're using, you rarely comprehend the literal machinations that the thing is continually executing in its interior. With a typewriter, you're always comprehending it, the relatively simple mechanistic process which is solely involved with written communication. You gain a decidedly more piquant experience. You see and feel the teeth, as Stephen King calls them, jump up and down in response to your touch as if they are the very nervous system of the machine, or a physical realization of your neurons firing the very stuff of thought and emotion, and this perception is given greater potency by the characteristic sounds of the thing. The click-clack, zips, clangs, and pitter-pats reinforce the sensuousness of the activity and provide the act of writing with a comforting mellifluousness that would otherwise be missing. It's fairly loud though, of course, and this unfortunately limits you to using it at certain times of the day. It can also prove irritating for those you live close with, and uncomfortable for those who are intimidated by the explicitness of another's productivity. In addition to all of this, it also engages your sense of smell to an 
extent. There's an unmistakable aroma to freshly typewritten material, a sharp and refined earthiness, and it's somewhat smoky. It's like a welcoming smell that your home is imbued with, afforded by a long, reliable recipe. Aside from the matter of productivity afforded by single-purpose technology, there is also much to be gained from dedicating different writing mediums to different stages of drafting. Once upon a fairly significant event, I decided to compose an insubstantial piece in a vague meter and tape it to my window for any passers-by to read. But when I came to see it exhibited how those prospective readers would see it, and perhaps an hour or two after I had finished, I very quickly recognised semantic irregularities, cisuras in the wrong places, and a few instances of flawed syntax, despite its effort at lyricism. Yeah, I was faced with that terrible thing when somebody shows you their work and everything about it is shit, so you don't really know where to start. And I realised that to experience your work in as different a context as possible, to reframe it, to alter the medium of its delivery, allows you to more accurately and usefully scrutinise your work, to see it with more objectivity and criticality. This principle is not exclusive to typewriter usage as well, even something as small as a font change on your Word document will mimic the effect I'm talking about. In the case of my projects, this video included, I used a typewriter for the first draft and transcribed that effort with a word processor later on. Having the text materialise via a completely different medium offers much in the way of positive changes being made on the spot. Not just because of that change of medium, but because the drafting is assimilated by the transcription. The early draft is combed through more meticulously that way, and you realise how good or bad your initial construction feels through the act of retyping it, kind of like how you read aloud your work. The typewriter is thus, incidentally, a conduit for more intricate drafting, and that is no bad thing. Using a word processor, using a computer, is unavoidable if you have writing of a certain kind to do. The convenience and intuitive nature of them demands it, and we're nearly a quarter way through the 21st century, I'm not blind, but the computer and the net seriously compound our natural predisposition toward distraction. Operating systems' prioritisation of multitasking and, more predominantly, the use of algorithmic systems by multimedia companies to capture our attention and keep it for as long as possible diminishes our capacity for sustained, single-minded concentration. We're so used to using such technology, so used to being interrupted so often, that we're training ourselves to pay attention to the insubstantial and minute. However, I wouldn't say that strength of will and discipline don't play their part in offsetting this circumstance, not to mention that there are programs which mitigate these issues of distraction and procrastination. I don't know about you though, but I've reached a point in which I don't primarily associate the act of even sitting at a computer with the demanding practices and projects that that computer was designed for and that I need that computer to engage with. By default, I now associate it with a tiring mental malaise that brought on by the intense and repetitive and addictive cognitive stimuli of multitasking and the modern internet. I'm thinking in particular of scrolling social media, travelling across multiple pages at a time through hyperlinks, and being involved in discourse styles and subsequent forms of subculture that inhibit greater expressiveness of language, trading it in for what is bland, uniform, and accessible. This stimuli, the scattering of our attention and strain on the working memory, has been shown to produce notable alterations in brain circuitry and functions. As just one example of such studies, Gary Small, professor of psychiatry at UCLA, demonstrated how digital tools can stimulate brain cell alteration and neurotransmitter release, which strengthen new and different pathways between neurons, the synapses, the firing of transmitters through which is said to essentially make up the stuff of thoughts, emotion, and memory. He also found that even minor use of such tools at a frequency of use of about an hour a day meant extensive activity in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, the area associated with problem solving and decision making. That's from an hour a day. Sometimes my usage can extend to 10 hours. Days like that especially won't see much activity in the regions of the mind associated with memory, language, and visual processing. And if you're on the internet, a fundamentally limited working memory will be constantly being taxed. And guess what may determine difficulties in the development of an understanding of any subject? Cognitive overload, which is compounded by extraneous problem solving and the division of attention. So it's little wonder that writing on a typewriter feels far more peaceful, involved, singular, and contemplative than writing on a computer which will always tempt you away from your objective. Being a single-purpose instrument, the typewriter doesn't constantly tempt you away from demanding tasks, it encourages longer periods of production and concentration. And the more you use it, the stronger your association of the typewriter with word production becomes. Despite its impracticality, 
It's dedicated and romantic, and it makes you feel like a writer, not just because of the ubiquitous cultural associations of it with the hard-working or struggling composer of the written word, but because that's the only thing that it's for.